Hi, I'm Ken. How about another look at my stamp collection? These are the earliest stamps of France, a set with the profile of Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture and of special note, grains and the harvest. These were France's first stamps issued starting in 1849. Napoleon I ruled over the first French Empire from 1804 until 1815. After his Waterloo, France returned to a monarchy, followed by a long period of political upheaval centered around questions of monarchy, empire, and republican forms of government, and what rights the people would have in choosing their own government. The stamps on this page are not of that first Emperor Napoleon. In 1848, a new constitution was formed to start the Second French Republic. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte became the first president of that new republic. This Napoleon was the nephew of Napoleon I. In 1851, three years into his constitutionally limited four-year term, Louis Napoleon took advantage of continuing political conflict to stage a self-coup, effectively extending his term another ten years. But by the end of 1852, he had reinstated the French Empire, installing himself as Emperor Napoleon III and making it a hereditary title. He would remain in office another 18 years until surrendering to Germany in 1870 during the Franco-Prussian War. These stamps are of that Napoleon, Emperor Napoleon III. They displaced the series stamps starting in 1850, while France was still a republic, maintaining the other elements of the series stamps, but replacing the goddess with the man. As it continues to this day, postage stamps are leveraged as important symbols for cementing power and driving ideology. The series stamps had been labeled Repub Franc, and so were these first Napoleon stamps, issued while he was still just president, before the coup, and while France was still a republic. The second issues forward were released after Napoleon had declared the Second Empire, these new stamps are labeled Empire Franc. Oddly, catalogs list an 1862 reissue of stamps during the Second Empire period that are still labeled Repub Franc. This made the history a little confusing for me. It turns out that the French postal system realized that they didn't have specimens of the earliest French stamp issues, so they reprinted small quantities of almost every stamp issued up to that point, including the early series stamps and some of the Republic-era Napoleon stamps. These were intended as specimens and are really only available unused. It might be a stretch to call them postage. These will almost certainly be blank spaces in my album forever. There was another Napoleon issued design change in 1863. After a military victory over Austria, a laurel wreath was added to Napoleon's head. Grander and grander. Napoleon Empire stamps would continue to be issued until Napoleon surrendered himself to the Germans during the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. As a result, and after much more internal political turmoil, the French Third Republic was formed, ultimately ending the war. As part of that transition, the Napoleon stamps were replaced by reissued series stamps with minor changes to the design. You can see I don't have many of these series stamps and I think all of mine are from after the Franco-Prussian War. So technically, the stamps on this first page are from after the Napoleon stamps, although I've chosen to group all the series issues together on this first page. I typically would talk through how to distinguish the various types of stamps in a series like this, but I just don't know enough about these to do that justice. I think we'll have to settle with the history of this era, Republic, Empire, and back to Republic again. The same is true for this page. I'm just not familiar enough with these stamps to tell you more than the history and major types of these stamps. For these, the major varieties are relatively straightforward. The first two types are imperforate and can be distinguished by the Repub or Empire labels. The reissued types are so specialized that if you have one, you certainly already know that. The last two types are perforated, but they can also easily be distinguished by the absence or presence of the laurel wreath. Perhaps someday I'll have enough experience with these two sets to come back with more details. In the aftermath of multiple wars and stabilizing political shifts, these peace and commerce issues came out. They were first issued in 1876. These are also called type sage stamps after the stamp's designer, Jules Auguste Sage. Along the bottom left of the stamp, you can see J.A. Sage INV. The INV is short for, okay, I admit, I can't pronounce French. Ah, en vente. 
like inventor, which translates here to the original artist. The name of the engraver, Louis Eugene Mouchon, can be seen on the bottom right, L-E Mouchon, O-A-S. If you know what O-A-S stands for, leave a note in the comments. These stamps look so complicated in the catalog, but I find them rather easy to categorize. I sort them first by denomination, then by color, then by type. I'll talk about that in a moment. And finally, in one case, by paper type. Most of these stamps also come in an imperforate version, but those are quite rare. Those are the A catalog numbers. If you think you've found an imperforate stamp, make sure you aren't actually looking at one of those cut square envelope stamps. When looking at the color of these stamps, you can look at both the ink color and the paper color. It may not be obvious, but in the Scott catalog, the ink color is what is typically listed. But in some cases, Scott adds a paper color next to that in an italic font. I find that confusing, so in my table, I remind myself that I'm talking about paper color with the word on like green on greenish. You honestly don't really need the paper color, but since the paper color is such a dominant feature of these stamps, it helps me when sorting them. For the first color series in particular, there are two types of stamps, which you can tell by the positioning of the J.A. Sage imprint on the bottom left. For the type 1 stamps, the N in INV sits below the B in Republic. For the type 2 stamps, the N sits below the U of Republic. It's very easy to see with a magnifying glass. This difference shows up again for three later stamps. The 5 centime yellow green stamp, the 10 centime black on lavender, and the 50 centime rose on rose stamp. But otherwise, the colors should be enough. Finally, there is one paper oddity. The 15 centime blue comes on an ordinary paper and a paper with a quadrille pattern on the back. This can be a little hard to see, but it's visible by looking at the back of the stamp against different angles of light. It makes the back of the stamp look like a tiny piece of graph paper. This is a fun series to collect, not too expensive or hard, but not easy either. It's a real joy for me when I find a new one. The next series from France is the 1 to 10 centime Liberty, Equality, Fraternity issues, allegorically representing the French motto. These are also known as Type Blanc stamps, after the designer Paul Joseph Blanc. They came out starting in 1900, although the three highest value issues extended the set in the 1920s. The next higher denominations of these Liberty issues, from 10 to 30 centimes, were designed by Louis-Eugene Mouchon. He was the engraver on the previous Peace and Commerce stamps. These are known in his honor as Type Mouchon stamps, or also as the Rights of Man stamps. These stamps came out along with the Blanc stamps in 1900. At first, the frame around the denomination was square. It's sometimes referred to as the tablet. In 1902, they were reissued with the frame slash tablet changed to a shield. It's a detail that I often miss if I'm not being careful. Finally, one of my favorites, these higher value type Merson stamps, named after the designer, Nicolas Luc Olivier Merson. The first values of this set, the 40 and 50 centime, and the one, two, and five franc stamps came out with the other Liberty issues in 1900. In 1906, a 45 centime version was added. Additional denominations came out in the 1920s, a 60 centime stamp, along with a new color two franc stamp, two colors of three franc stamps, and both 10 and 20 franc stamps. This stamp is oddly similar to Germany's Germania stamp. This stamp features Marianne, the personification of France, just like Germania represents Germany. You can tell it's Marianne by her Phrygian cap. Also like Germania, she's wearing a combination of a breastplate and a robe, representing that she is at rest, but still ready for battle. Also like the Germania issues, Marianne is holding a sword, and while Germania's sword is wrapped in an olive branch, Marianne is seated in front of olive trees. You might not be surprised that both these stamps were issued in the same year by bordering countries that had been at war just 30 years earlier. World War I was a mere 14 years away. Another interesting feature of these wide stamps is that there's a splotch of a second color of ink at their centers. It's supposed to be the background behind the olive trees, but the color always looks like a blob in front of the trees to me. The slightest misregistration throws off the intended illusion. They should have printed these layers in the other order. I'm going to have to add another page if I get any of the higher values. That would be a good problem to have, although they really aren't that expensive. 
Next, we have the famous French sower stamps. I've mentioned before that the sower is Marianne again, the personification of France. She is sowing wheat and reminds us, like the series stamp did before, how important wheat and agriculture is to the French culture. What's a French meal without some good French bread? I think it's also important to note that the symbol of France is no longer a goddess, but rather an everyday worker, cementing the swath of French history finally in favor of the regular citizens. Symbols are important. There are three basic designs of these stamps. On this first page, I have the version of the sewer stamps with a horizon and sunrise behind her. The background of these stamps is made up of horizontal lines compared to the solid background of the later designs. This gives these stamps a more muted look. These were designed by Louis Oscar Rohde, but it doesn't seem that anyone ever calls these type Rohde stamps. This is the first of two pages of the new designs of the sewer stamps. I guess I should point out that I don't have a page for the intermediate design of this stamp. I don't have a copy yet, although these are very common stamps. This 10 cent red sewer stamp was rushed out using an early design proposal to accommodate a newly reduced postage rate from 15 to 10 cent times. People didn't like the sewer standing on a hill and they complained that since she had been compacted by a millimeter that she looked a bit chunky. I think people just like to complain. Anyway, when the new designs were released, the hill was gone and the sower was a millimeter taller and these would become the most recognizable and ubiquitous of French stamps, a staple of any beginning French collection. These would stay in production for over 30 years. Even so, I don't have all the varieties. These are not particularly challenging to identify. There are both major and minor color variations that you may struggle to match to the names in the catalog, but that's manageable. There's also some surcharges and overprints that extend this collection. I've cheated this table a little so you can see it. I don't have any of those yet. These overlap with the next series featuring Louis Pasteur, philatelically tying the two sets together. There's also a 1927 souvenir sheet of two sewer stamps, and this stamp was reissued as part of a 1960s definitive set. Those two stamps are multicolored and easy to tell apart from the older issues. I have one of them. I think this is a beautiful series, and it's one that gives me the joy I'm looking for in my collection. Like with the Germania stamps, I love sitting down with a new pile of these and hunting for the ones I'm missing. Okay, these stamps are actually commemorative stamps. They were issued to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Louis Pasteur's birth. Or are they? You already know that I collect regular issues, but I've chosen to include them in this regular issue album. In all other ways, they act like regular issues. It's a blurry line, as I've said before. These are regular issue sized. The design with a bust in profile looks like a regular issue design. They come in a range of denominations like a regular issue. And when the sewer issues were surcharged with new values, some of these stamps were also surcharged, linking this commemorative stamp with another regular issue set in a traditionally regular issue type of use. On the other hand, the 1930 overprinted sewer and Pasteur stamps are undeniably commemoratives of the 48th International Labor Bureau Congress in Paris. I guess that makes the Pasteur overprint a double commemorative. I think we can safely say that these Pasteur issues are both commemoratives and regular issues. At least I will. Interestingly, these Pasteur issues break a 74-year streak of issuing only regular issue stamps. After this, the French postal system goes all in in making commemorative issues. I think that's enough in this album for today. Happy collecting!